to um, all learning all about determining the slope of a line. Okay, and we're going to learn how to do it visually. Okay, so how to use like a graph and then how to use uh, and solve it algebraically. So using more of an equation. So you may have seen this uh, previously a little bit in grade nine, but we're going to dive a little bit more deeper into it. Um, so we're going to be able to determine the slope by a graph. Um, so something to understand is we're counting the change in y and the change in x. Now, as we move forward, we're going to have a few different ways to talk about slope. So in chapter five or in previous videos, you may have learned that slope actually also means rate of change. So remember that. And that's kind of something to recall here. The slope of a line is also referred to as the rate of change. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to use now learn how to use this equation. Now, it's really important that you understand slope equals m. So m always represents, well, not always, but in this case, will always represent the slope. Okay, slope is rise over run, and then we can think of it as, now, this might be a new little symbol for you. A triangle means change. So this is the change in y over the change in x, okay? And then we can learn how to use this equation later on. We also want to understand um, and identify when a graph has a negative or a positive slope. Okay, and we also want to determine uh, and, and explain the slope of a horizontal and vertical line. So we're going to talk about that later. Okay, and then we'll learn why we only actually really need two points in order to determine the slope of something. So let's move forward and let's talk about calculating slope. Okay, so in this section, you're going to learn how to find the slope of a line two different ways. Okay, our first way, we're going to do it visually. Okay, so the slope is simply the ratio over the rise over the run. Okay, and think about the difference between the rise and the run. What words do you think of when you think of, or what do you think of when you think of rise? We think of up or down, and that's exactly what it is, okay, up or down. Now, recognize any time you count up, that's a positive number. Any time you count down, that's a negative number. And then the run, well, hopefully you think of like a horizontal line, and we think of left to right. And something most often people think of when they think of right is a positive number. And then when we think of left, we think of negative numbers. Okay, so up or down, left and right. And then we're going to learn the second way. Now the second way is when you have two coordinate points. So remember coordinate points are those things that you list your x coordinate first and then your y coordinate. We also talk about it in terms of the, your domain value and then your range value. And we have to apply this equation below. So here, slope equals m, which is rise over run. So this still helps you remember this equation. We can think of it more algebraically and equationally where it's the change in y over the change in x. So that's sum y point 2 minus y point 1. And recognize that these two points make one of our coordinate points that we'll use. So x2 and y2. And then these two points here make our other coordinate point, x1 and y1. Okay? So let's first off learn our first method. So finding it visually using a graph. Okay, so when you're determining the slope, you're finding the ratio between the change in y over the change in x. We often refer to the above definition as simply rise over run. So rise divided by run. Now, a few things to point out and you're kind of your steps if you're a step-by-step -step person. Find two points that lie on your graph. They can be any points, okay? You'll always get the same answer if you do it correctly as long as these points exist on your line. Okay, then we're going to determine the rise by counting how many coordinate points you must go up. So remember, if we go up, it's positive. If you go down, it's negative. And then you'll do the same for your run, but this is chain, the change in your x-coordinates. So how many times do we go to the right, which in this case would be positive, or to the left, which would be negative? Divide those numbers and simplify. Okay, so over here, let's zoom in and look at this really quick example. So you can see it's color-coded. Your rise is, if we decide to use this point here, and how do we get from point 1, let's call this point 1, to point 2, 
how do we get there? Well, we have to, we can't go diagonally. We have to talk about it in terms of going up and then to the right. So how many times do we go up? Well, here we start at four and then we go one, two, three, four up. So this will be plus four. So our rise equals plus four. Now, what about our run? Well, our run, once we get to this point, how many points do we have to go over? Well, it looks like we only have to go over plus one. So our run equals plus one. And then you can plug this into your equation. Okay, so rise or slope equals rise over run. So we just set our rise as four divided by one. So our, in this case, our slope is four. Now recognize you could have went from this point to this point and you get the same answer. But in this case, to get from here to here, you have to go down four units. So it'd be negative four. And then you'd have to go left one unit, negative one. But remember, negative four divided negative one equals positive four. So you get the exact same solution. And that's what I mean. As long as you have your sign conventions proper, you can use any points on your line. So... Uh, this is just some, a few quick examples, but remember, sign conventions are important. So a few things, pay attention to your scale. So your scale is how much your x-axis is going up by, how much your y-axis is going up by. And remember, vertical distance is the rise. So going up is the rise. And if you're going up, it's positive. If you're going down, it's negative. Okay? And then the horizontal well, that's your run. Remember, if you go right, that's positive. If you go left, that's negative. So here we went down. How many units did we go down? We went negative two units down. And that's what we mean by our scale. Not every tick is one. Every two ticks is one. So to get from here to here, that's minus one, minus two. So that's two down. And then one two, three over, so negative two over three. So your M, which is your slope, is negative two over three. So just to note, the slope you can think of as how steep something is. So the larger your M value, the more steep it is. Okay, so if you have a point, a graph that has a slope of 2 and a slope of 9, well, this graph will be much steeper. It'll be something like this compared to a slope of 2, where this graph would only look something like this. So you can see this graph is definitely not near as steep as this graph, okay? Something to recognize is the slope of your line is always constant, okay? It never changes, and that's because you're talking about a perfectly straight line. So let's move on, and let's see some examples done here. So determine the slope of each graph in two different ways, okay? So here we have some points plotted on our graph, okay? I'm going to name these points. I'm going to name this point P. I'm going to name this point G, and I'm going to name this point R. Okay, now let's list the coordinate points of these points. So P, well, the X value is 0, the Y value is 2. So I would list this as 0 and 2. Okay, remember it's X and then your Y value. Here, what's our X value? Well, it's negative 1, and our Y value is also negative 1. So G is negative 1 and negative 1. And then R... Well, that's negative 2 and negative 4. So our x value is negative 2, our y value is negative 4. Okay, so we just listed a few of the names. Now, in order to figure out slope, what do we have to do? Well, slope equals rise over run. Okay? And remember, rise is going up or down, and run is going left or or right. Okay, so let's solve this in one way. So solve one way. So what points am I going to use? I'm going to use um, P and G. So I'm going to use this point here 
and this point here. Now, I'm going to ask myself, how do I get from G to P? Okay, well, first off, let's figure out maybe what our run is. Okay, so our run, well, in order to get from this point to here, I have to go over one unit to the right. Okay, so this would be plus one unit right. And then what's my rise? Well, once I'm at this point here, how much do I have to go up by? Well, I'll have to go up by one, two, three. So here was plus one. And now we're talking about going up one, two, three. So this is plus three units up. So plus three units up. And now I can plug into my slope equation, m equals rise over run. In this case, rise is three, run is one, so our slope is three, okay? Now let's do it another way, just so you can see that we can really just use any points we want. So in this case, I'm gonna use um, P and R, okay? So one's all the way across here. So I'm gonna ask myself, how do I get from P to R? Well, to get to R and P, I'm gonna first figure out my run. Okay, and my run here, it looks like I have to go over one, two units left. So the fact that I'm going left is minus two units. So my run, I'm gonna go minus two units left. And now that I'm at this point, how do I, how the heck do I get all the way down to negative four? Well, here I'm have to gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm not gonna have to go one, two, three, four, five, six down. So this is negative six units down. Okay, so my run equals negative six units down. So now I have enough information. Sorry, that's my rise. I shouldn't say run. That's my rise because I'm going down. So remember, slope equals rise over run. In this case, my rise is negative six units because I'm going down over my run, which is negative two units because I'm going to the left. Now here, remember, we have that step, the very last step, simplify your form. Okay, so I'm gonna simplify this. Um, and how am I gonna simplify this? Well, ask yourself, what two numbers are, what are both these numbers divisible by? Well, they're both divisible by two. Recognize they're both negatives, so those cancel out and turn into positive. So here we get six dividing two, which gives us three. Two dividing two, which gives us one. So our slope, equals three again, a positive three, positive three and positive three. So hopefully you can see why we can use really any points on here as long as we have the signs proper. Okay, let's maybe go to the next one. So this next one, it doesn't clearly just state what our values are, okay? And look at our scale. Check how the scale is kind of weird. It's not just going simply up by one, two. Each point vertically is up two, two, four. Each point horizontally is going up by threes. So we really have to keep into account that. Now, anytime you're trying to find slope where that doesn't just plot you nice points, is find points that you know for sure are on the graph. So I would never use something in the middle here because I'm estimating. You never want to estimate. So I can tell what this point is. So I'm going to use that point. I'm gonna use this point here, and I'm gonna list the coordinate point right away. This coordinate point, remember, coordinates is x and then y. My x value is zero, my y value is negative two. So this will be zero and negative two. And then maybe let's use uh, this point here. 
Okay, so this point here, what's my x value? Well, my x value is negative 3, and my y value is 0. So this is negative 3 and 0. So I'm going to do one way, and then you can try on your own to find the other way. And remember, there's a million different other ways to do it, as long as you get the same answer. So I'm going to use negative 3 and 0, and 0, negative 2. Now recall, it doesn't matter if I ask myself, how do I get from here to here, or if how do I get from here to here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself, how do I get from this point to this point? Okay, so point one to point two. So let's maybe figure out V rise this time. So in order to get from here to here, how many points do I have to go down? And remember, my scale is not every tick is one. Every tick is actually two. So to get from our point three and zero to here, this is actually two units down. So I'm going to put minus two. So my rise is negative two units down. Now let's focus on our run. So our run here, maybe I'll put it all in the same color. So my run. So my run, remember, run is left to right. Well, I have to go to the right. And how many units am I going? I'm going three whole units. So this will be three units right. So here, I can see that I'm going plus three units right. Okay, so now I'm going to use my slope equation, m equals rise over run. And I'm going to plug this in properly. So my rise is negative 2, dividing my run, which is positive 3. So now I know this slope tells me something. It tells me every two units down, I go three units right. Now, something to note. Remember that in a fraction, negatives can kind of float. That's what I call. So here, I could write it as negative 2 over 3. I could write the negative right in front of the fraction like this, or I can write the negative on the bottom. So whenever you have a negative in a fraction, remember, that this negative can kind of float down and up. Now, what if we put it down here, okay? The, th we the cool thing about this is this is the same slope as this. This is just stating something different. In this case, your rise is positive two. Here, this tells me every two units up, go three units left. So let's see if that works. So this is saying every two units I go up, I go three units left. So let's down here. If I go two units up, that's going to this point, And then I go three units left, I end up at this point. So it works perfectly. How about if I start here, or sorry, here? Every two units I go up, I go three units to the left. So now I'm still on my graph. So your, your value, your... Um, your negative value can just simply float, okay? You just read it a little differently, but it'll work no matter what line you're using. So I might pause the video there and end it. I would suggest going and practicing visually finding slope using m equals rise over run. I'm gonna go on to the next video and that's gonna be using the equation, okay? So it's really important to be able to use it visually because sometimes if you're a visual person, this is the easiest way to find it.